It is a time for change for the Biden White House. In addition to Chief of Staff Ron Klain and Labor Secretary Marty Walsh leaving, Communications Director Kate Bedingfield is officially stepping down tomorrow. She has held that position since Biden's inauguration. She was his 2020 deputy campaign manager, and she was with him when he was VP. I got to spend some time with Bedingfield at the White House earlier today. As she looks back on her time there, what she'll always remember about working with the president and what comes next for this administration. Here we are, Kate. It's the end. Here we are. As far as communications jobs, it's safe to say you have the best one in the world. No question. Why are you leaving? You know, as you know well, these jobs are all consuming and they take every ounce out of you and you're grateful to give it. But at a certain point, you have to step back and say, okay, it's time to hand the baton off to the next person. And We've accomplished so much in these first two years that it felt like if there was ever going to be a moment to make this incredibly difficult decision, this was the moment. And so it's, it's time. What has stood out to you over the last two years? What will you think back on like this was a moment? One that, that sticks out in my mind, the night uh, that Russia invaded, the night that, uh, that uh, the bombs started falling. Um, you know, sitting in uh, in the National Security Advisor's office and the call coming in from President Zelensky, who was, you know, in the basement, essentially, of the presidential palace in Kiev under bombardment, under attack. Uh, and the call came in that he wanted to talk to the president. Having the opportunity to sit there and listen as President Biden talked to President Zelensky and said, you know, I am I'm here for whatever you need. Just hearing the the bravery and the resoluteness in Zelensky's voice um, you know, that was a truly remarkable moment. Then how have you felt almost exactly one year later, one of the last things you have worked on was President Biden going to Ukraine, meeting with President Zelensky. Again, it was you and about two other people total that even knew about this trip. To have the opportunity to be part of getting President Biden into Kyiv so that he could stand there and show the world that Kyiv stands, that Ukraine stands, and that we're going to stand with them as long as it takes. Um, it was it was overwhelming. It was really overwhelming. And I've you know I've worked on other uh, covert trips before, um, but nothing that felt this impactful. And uh, and it really felt like a a moment where things came full circle. Looking back over the last two years, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. From a communications perspective, anything you wish was handled differently. Well, sure. I mean, I think, you know, you're not, I wouldn't be being candid if I didn't say that there were things that I wish we had handled differently. There were, like mo what? There were moments where, uh, you know, I wish we had the opportunity to, um, to start from scratch and to explain to people more clearly, you know, the reason the, the, reason the president did X, Y, or Z is like because what? he was like motivated. Give us an example. By. I think there were many moments throughout the, the Inflation Reduction Act process where I think uh, you know, the president's directive from the outset was that we were going to work with all comers to get to uh, a piece of legislation that was gonna make these fundamental changes. I mean, this was a core reason he ran for president was to kind of fundamentally reshape the economy to benefit working people. But certainly there were moments throughout that process where we stepped back and thought, you know, if we'd framed this differently or if we'd explained this differently, would we be able to more effectively make the case the president's trying to make? And there's certainly moments where I look back and think we could have done it differently. I want to ask you about something that has got to be frustrating. Clearly, the president is frustrated by it. His approval ratings haven't really changed over the last two years. However, from a legislative perspective, you've gotten a ton of stuff done, whether we're talking the CHIPS Act, Inflation Reduction Act, the infrastructure law. Why do you think much of this isn't sinking in with the American people. These are huge achievements, some that got done on a bipartisan basis. Yeah. Well, some of it, I think, is as simple as people are going to start to feel the impacts over the course of this year and next year. I mean, you get a big, bi take the infrastructure law, you get a big bipartisan infrastructure bill, a historic bill passed. Well, those roads and bridges don't start getting fixed the next day, right? I mean, it takes a little time. And the president is very focused on pushing to make sure this happens as quickly as possible. But it takes a little time. So people are going to start to feel the impacts of what he's done. And I think, uh, and I think they're going to know and they're going to understand that it's making a difference in their lives. When you talk about what the majority of the American people want, are there Republicans 
making their way into this White House or talking to the president on a somewhat regular basis? Of course. Yes, absolutely. The president talks to people of all stripes and all perspectives. Uh, a lot of those conversations are private because it is necessary in this day and age, to, if you're going to genuinely get things done, to be able to have discussions in private. But the average know person that watching might think the president never talks to Republicans or, you know, it's, it's completely divided. Take us kind of inside, and I'm not asking you for names or yeah, specifics. Yeah. But what is it really like? Because I think the average person at home would be very surprised to hear that the president does talk to Republicans. He does. He absolutely talks to Republicans. He believes, and I think his legislative successes thus far would show um, that it's the case, that if you truly want to get big things done, you do have to work with people on both sides. You have been with President Biden for the better part of 10 years. What is something that you know about him that you wish the American people knew? Oh, he's very, very funny. I do think the American people probably know that, but he's very funny. He's excellent in, in a tough moment at bringing a sense of levity in a way that puts everybody at ease, um, which, I think, which I think is important. And why should the American people vote for him again? Because he believes fundamentally that America is moving in a good direction, that our best days are ahead, that things are only going to get better. I think the president has shown that he knows how to get things done, and he knows how to do it in a way that will fundamentally make your life better. Do you think you're leaving this administration for now or for good? <laughs> Never say never. I think, you know, this has truly been the honor of a lifetime. And if the president felt at some point there was some way that I could serve him, of course, I'm always going to be humbled by that. But right now, I am extremely eager to take a little time and see my kids and, and have a little rest. And do what? What do you want to do? What are you going to do Thursday morning? <laughs> it's funny how many people ask me that. And I wish I had some whiz-bang amazing answer. But uh, the answer is I'm going to sleep. Then I'm going to take my kids and drop them off at school, and it's going to be glorious. Uh, I'm probably going to work out, uh, maybe see a friend for lunch, and uh, enjoy having just one phone instead of two, and just take maybe a little... not look at that phone, and maybe for a not few look at that phone at only only when I want to. So it's going to be it will be nice to have a little break. Kate, thank you so much. Thank you.